Hello everyone and welcome back to our Niagara Game Art series. In this series of videos we're going through how the Niagara system works and trying to get you to grips with how to create visual effects via particles in the engine. So we done one part of Niagara system last time and we made this fireball effect. What I want to do in this episode is just go through a bit more of the settings and features of the Niagara system just so you understand what's going on, what different components do and how you can customize it to your liking. So I'm just going to open up our system. So our Niagara is comprised of a system, which is this red one here, and emitters. And we only have one emitter type for this, and that's this fiber one here. And these are orange. Alongside that, we will have like materials and textures like you would imagine anywhere else. So we can open up our system. And the system comprises of multiple emitters. So you combine emitters together to get the final out, uh, outcome and final look of your uh, particle effect. So here we can see the emitter, the fiber E, and all its various what we call modules attached to it. Now we can customize it here um, in a non-destructive state, meaning if I were to say change velocity here off, okay, what that means is that it won't damage or change any of the code on the original emitter. So if I go back to the original emitter here, you can see it still is what it is. So we can customize this uh, quite nicely per emitter instance, if we call that an instance. I'll turn these back on. Okay, so let's talk about how all this works. So I'm going to go into my emitter. So an emitter that you see here, just to give this a bit more space. Okay. So emitter has uh, what is called modules, which can be turned off or on and have various uh, settings inside of them. So let's have a look at one of these ones here. We've got emitter state. And here we can see how the emitter's behavior when it comes to like looping and so forth is handled. I've got spawn rate here as well. I can customize how many are being spawned. So if I change that down to five, it will now only spawn five. Go up to 20, and there you go. Uh, other ones we've got, are such as add velocity, solve forces and velocities, color, scale sprite size, and it goes on and on and on. And we can add modules by clicking on one of these add icons next to their categories. So if I go to, say, particle update here, click on add, I now got a list of all the various modules available to me. And you might find it easier to search for what you're looking for. So if I want to do something with say size, I've now got scale mesh and scale sprite. And this is a sprite, so we're gonna use scale sprite by size, which I already have here. So inside your modules, we have the ability to change the details. So I'm gonna click on spawn rate here. So spawn rate here is set to 20. Now, this is a constant value, I meaning it's always going to spawn 20 particles. Or make sure at least there's 20 particles on the screen. So, on the right hand side of that, you'll see this little down arrow. If we hit that, we can now change the type of input that is part of this module. So, rather than using a constant value, we can use something a bit different. So, if you go to dynamic inputs and expands open, you'll see loads of different options you could use. Now, there's loads to choose from. But you may find it useful to just use a couple of uh, key favorites here. So we have uniform ranged float. This is basically a random range. So if you say minimum of say 10, maximum of 20, it's now going to choose a random value between 10 and 20 to spawn. And you'll see there's like little gaps here and there in the spawning of this um, as those discrepancies are found. So if I change the minimum down to say 2, you see their spacing of that apart is a lot more frequent. So another one of these options that you may use quite a lot of is the curve option. So you notice that one on say something like uh, scale sprite size here. And the curve here, float from curve, gets you a single float out. And it basically says from zero, which is the start of a particle's lifespan, to one, which is the end of its lifespan, change the, uh, the value as it is here. So here I'm doing scaling. And if I tweak these down, you can see it will now start smaller and go very small. If I drag the end up, 
and, and bigger. And you can also add points to this by shift right, uh, left clicking, add a point. So if I want to go down then up, I can easily make it do so. And also you can right click on any of these points and change it to a curve rather than using a linear line. And you'll get a nice smooth movement. So something like color has another option. So on color, you can see color for curves or curve for colors rather. And um, we can use this to add color. Now the top row here is the color option and the bottom row is the alpha. So I can either click on the existing one and choose a color there, or I can click an empty space and add my own one into this. And so I'm gonna change this one to say blue. And you can see it tweaking from one side to another. Okay. Now we can delete these as well by clicking on it left uh, once and hitting delete to clear it from the game. And I said the bottom ones handle alpha, so I can click on this and change the opacity. And there you go. Now the benefit of the Niagara system is that we can also assign uh, variables to this and, and layer these options up to get really complicated um, particle effects. So let's go for example into our, um, let's go to add velocity. So if we go to add velocity here, we've got a simple adding of velocity over time. But if I click on here, we can change this to, let's say, uh, let's go uniform, which is basically range, um, random range. And I'm gonna go, it's just, we don't do it in the X, so we'll do minus uh, 100. And, and then we'll do minus 10. And let's turn Y down to zero and Z down to zero. So some of these particles are going to go a bit slower. Some are going to go a bit faster. What I'm going to do here though, is I'm going to click on the end arrow of the say the minimum here. And now I can do it again. So we can add um, a random vector to this to really randomize what we're doing here. When you are using the random, you'll get this vector scale, and this basically changes the, the strength of the randomness. So by, it'll get a randomized normalized value. So the values between zero and one, multiplied by 50, you now get a 50 length in any direction here. And if you scale this way up, you'll get it going faster out of the node there, okay? Now, as you can see, they're changing direction as they fly out. The reason why that happens is because we're using the particle update section. That means these particles are getting a new velocity as they are moving away. And to continue with the idea of layering on the uh, effects on, you can see vector scale here also has a little drop down arrow. We can click on that and you can kind of see what kind of happens here. We can just keep on going, adding our own different things in here. So I'll do a sine wave in there and we can make it change the scale here we'll do uh, 50 and period of say 10 no sorry 0 0.1 and you can use sine waves to get randomized values and it just goes on and on and on and you can see each one of these also has a little drop down where we keep on going and going and going and you can keep on doing this until you get the effect that you want which makes Nyko really really powerful okay so um, experiment and play around these figures to get the desired outcome I'm just going to turn these back on like so and just put this back to minus what was it or to minus 20 so what else is there in this window? Well, obviously on the left hand side, we've got the viewport where you can see the uh, particle system in action. On the bottom here, we've got the timeline tab, and this is a way of organizing multiple emitters and their lengths and their positioning um, 
all keyed onto a timeline. And there are some, uh, even some um, parameters that we can also animate as well. So if you want some parameters to change throughout the lifespan of the whole entire system, you can do here. Um, on the right hand side, you've got obviously a details panel for all your different selections you have. So if you select different modules, you get different options here. Then you've got parameters tab, and this is where you have your exposed and custom um, parameters or inputs. So for example, we if we go to say spawn rate and click on the little down arrow, you can see new expression, new local value, and new scratch dynamic input. These refer to creating a new parameter here. We're going to use our own my own ones here by going to um, uh, make here. So read from new emitter parameter and so forth. And basically this allows us to set up a parameter that is um, accessible via Blueprint. So we can make a custom module or custom emitter uh, parameter and link it towards the actual gameplay that's going on. So if we wanted this to spawn less or more based on its level, we can control that via an expression here. And finally, we've got the Scratchpad tab. And the Scratchpad is where you can design your own custom modules, uh, like you see here. So you can create your own custom modules, which then you can um, share amongst other uh, emitters as well. And you can, it's basically another type blueprint system. We'll be covering that a lot later in uh, our videos, so keep an eye out for that video in the future. Other than that, I think that is it when it comes to explaining what's going on here in Niagara System. So once we, now we've got that understanding, in the next episode we're going to go through and show different types of um, particle systems and particle effects. So we're going to show you how to do bursts, the beams, uh, trails, all this stuff. We're going to show you all those things in the future of this series. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash ryanlaley where you can watch all my videos before anyone else just from the cost of $1. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future content, leave a comment below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.